name is Chris Quinlan and this is The Drum Show. What I'm doing tonight, I'm going to keep going with the composer idea that I've been doing. I've done Stravinsky and Varese. I've done Shostakovich and Debussy. But what I'd like to do tonight is the subject of minimalism. Okay. Now, Minimalism is the kind of music where you just use small themes, like what I'm doing now, where just my right hand may be going down my tom-tom, snare high mid-floor, snare high mid-floor, snare high mid-floor, snare high mid-floor. Put in the left hand as a single stroke roll. And basically, what I'm doing is what's best known as an ostinato, which is a repeated musical pattern. And the idea of the idea of minimalism is to expand on the themes. Now the two composers that I'd like to talk about tonight is Steve Reich, who was born in 1936 and he's still with us and he's still going strong. And Philip Glass, who is probably the most famous of the minimalist composers. He was born in 1937. And what they, they are both famous for, they've collaborated together in the 1960s when minimalism was first coming together. What they did was start to work with things like tape. Uh, Steve Reich is famous for a thing called the clapping song, which is from 1972. It's written for just, well, it starts off with two players. And he's big on things called phasing, where you might take a, f a figure in unison like that, and then bit by bit, you, you phase it out. Now us drummers know that very well as things like inversions, where we might take a paradiddle, like a single paradiddle, which is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Can you hear it or see it? And then start on the next in my case, the right hand. So that's what Steve Reich would be doing. Funnily enough, he had a Grammy Award winning album called Different Trains. And what that what was all, what all that was about was he grew up next to a train line so he would hear all the different trains he got he got to know all the different sounds of the trains and what he did was because of his Jewish upbringing and because he was born before the war what he did with Different Trains, the album, was actually score it and make reference to the trains that took people to the concentration camps during World War II. One of his more recent pieces of music was all to do with 9-11. The album com cover shows a picture of one of the jets crashing into the one of the towers, so it's a very hard, you know, hard-hitting album cover. So what I'm doing here is trying to emulate this kind of music. 
Now I've talked about trains, different trains, the, the Grammy Award winning album of Steve Reich. Over to Philip Glass. He, probably his most famous His most famous things is Koyanatsky. That was an award-winning film from the early 80s, and there was a tri trilogy. There was there was Koyanatsky, Power Quatsi, and the Koyakatsi, I think. And um, and these these th three films were quite acclaimed. He's written a lot of music. He's collaborated with a lot of people. David Bowie, for one. Kronos Quartet. And both of these guys, Steve Reich, Philip Glass, both of these guys, Philip Glass and Steve Reich, have had a profound influence on so many different people. Lou Reed in the Velvet Underground in the 60s. Uh, King Crimson. And a lot of, um, you know, people like Tool because they've been influenced by King Crimson, so the list goes on. And if you notice what I'm doing here, back to the paradiddle. Keeping a four on the floor with a hi-hat on two and four, getting back to drums. This is a drum show after all. Because I'm doing a single paradiddle. Two things. I've mentioned Different Trains by Steve Reich. One of the tracks off that album is strings just doing the, the rhythm of a paradiddle. And you also notice that this is the main rhythm to the Immigrant Song, okay, by Led Zeppelin, from their third album. Do you notice that Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, who are the award-winning composers, Nine Inch Nails, of course, for Trent Reznor, but did you notice the new film out, uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? Track one off the soundtrack album is the Immigrant Song, an electro, sort of like an electronic uh, version of it, with the singer from the Yeah Yeah Yeahs doing the doing the vocals to it. This hypnotic rhythm, hopefully it's hypnotic, not boring, gives you the feeling to the immigrant song. So you can see how the influence is profound even up to dance music of today because you've just got that repetitive rhythm all the time. So if you go into any club, perhaps you could thank Steve Reich and Philip Glass for the music you're dancing to. They are that profound an influence. Okay, more after the break. 